I already know what's happening. You're sending this video to your friends who don't use their indicator lights, aren't you? Hi, my name is Danny Ward. Welcome to Knowledge Curve, the show here to inform you about everything and anything. Today, we are looking at car indicators, or turn signals, blinkers, flashy McFlashies, whatever you call them, we are looking at the little flashing light that you turn on to tell other drivers on the road what direction you'll be turning, or moving your vehicle at the very least. Need to go left or right? Flick the stalk by the steering wheel up or down to turn on a little flashing light. How much harder can it be? Well, surprisingly, the science behind the turn signal is a bit more complex than you first may imagine. Now, an age-old question asked here on the internet many years ago, what is the source of that mysterious ticking noise? Well, in relation to cars, the ticking noise is caused by a thing known as the thermal flasher. Now, while it may sound like a supervillain from a 1960s Batman comic, this is the magical component behind a car indicator's light and the reason it makes the clicking sound. The thermal flasher is a small cylindrical device that consists of an electrical conductor, a curved length of spring, tungsten steel, and a resistive wire. Within the thermal flasher, the electrical circuit is completed when the turn signal stalk is clicked up or down by the driver. Prior to this point though, there is no connection between the piece of spring steel and the electrical contact. Within a split second, current flows through the resistive wire, which heats up the spring steel. This heated spring still expands due to the atoms within being driven further apart. Heat energy is being converted into kinetic energy. Sounds sciencey, but hold on for one second. It's actually a relatively simple concept. The molecules within the metal move around more. They need more space to do this, so ultimately the metal expands. This expanded metal strip can now touch the electrical contact, which drives the current to the light bulb, which causes it to be illuminated. This current flow allows the metal to cool as the heat energy is converted into electrical energy, and so the metal spring retracts in size and the contact with the light bulb is broken, meaning it switches off again. This ultimately creates the ticking. This cycle repeats again and again and again until you ultimately turn the vehicle and cancel the signal. This occurs via a series of levers, rollers, and other such trickery. And the turn signal is ultimately fired back into place when the steering wheel moves in the appropriate direction, which breaks the circuit. Ever seen a car indicator light that flashes excessively fast? Well, as the bulb burns out, the resistance of the circuit changes. The metal spring heats up quicker due to a greater current. This allows for more contacts to be made in a shorter length of time, meaning a faster flash. If this is on your car though, it's probably a good time to replace that indicator bulb. One interesting side tangent is that turn signal lights as we know it today originally went through a trafficator phase. <sighs> a what now phase? Well, these were retro turn signals and they were popular in the 1900s. They would have been raised or lowered outward from the side of a vehicle to function very much how we use turn signals today. However, originally they were simply a coloured material that was lowered either by mechanical or pneumatical means. But by 1908, the future was really here. Electrical lights were added. How about 1918? Well, now we have electronically moving trafficators. Trafficators these days though are pretty rare. After the 1950s, legislation became a lot stricter and it forced a turn signal much closer to what we know today. And so the popularization of the flashing white, red or orange light began. Originally though, the very first turn signal was surprisingly just a one-off invention by Ohio-based Oscar J. Simpler in 1929. It wasn't even made commercially available to car buyers until 1939. If you did want to see it though, it can be seen in person in the Smithsonian Museum in Washington DC, USA. That is, unless they've taken it off display. In which case, I tried. This original turn signal device is a metal box filled with a quatrefoil shaft which allows for the lighting of five lenses, which will tell other drivers your vehicular intentions. 
bam, stick a trade bark on that. And you've got a leading summer rom-com blockbuster right there. Did it just tell people if you were going left or right though? No, we can still go left or right, but we also now have the option to tell other drivers if we are slowing down or stopping. Admittedly, this function nowadays is done by the red trunk light on the rear of a car, but back with the original, it was all built in to one contained unit. Then Joseph Bell came along and ruined it all by inventing the clicking, flashing turn signal we all know and love today in the late 1930s. These became standard on Buick cars by 1938 as a new safety feature, and other car manufacturers soon followed suit. So there you have it. Now you know a bit more about these called blinkers, you should have no excuse not to use them. Unless of course you don't drive, in which case you should go and tell all your friends to use them instead. And if they don't drive, well, for now just think about car indicators or something, I don't know. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and that maybe you've learned something new. And I'll be seeing you next time. Stay hungry for factuality.